Hi, I'm Daz. Um, I've made quite a few kits of late and published videos on them and some interesting comments and feedback. Um, why don't you build something from scratch, Daz? Or, um, but also been said, you know, it is difficult to get hold of parts, so I thought I'd have a look online to see if I could find any interesting circuits. So I've been looking at radio and electronics constructors from the 70s and um, found an interesting phase lock loop FM tuner and only two homemade inductors, um, very similar to pulse counting, so no IF transformers to worry about, so I thought about that one. Um, a pulse counting FM unit of course. Um, I could find the circuit. So yeah, very similar again. Quite a simple uh, circuit. And also that interested me as well was a, a phase detecting AM radio as well. And again, that looks uh, quite easy to uh, build. Um, I found all these on the, uh, oh, let me think, uh, yeah. AmericanRadioHistory.com So uh, I've put the dates on here. Also got some data sheets and some other stuff I found as well. So I think I'm going to have a go at building something and uh, see if we can uh, come up with something interesting. I've got some old radio boards for parts. I've got some of the components here and some board and uh, zero board etc. So I think we could uh, build up something and uh, see how it works. I'm just interested to see um, how a synchronous detector would work on AM and also using a phase lock loop to detect FM. I just thought it might be interesting. So here's the basic block diagram what we're building. So we've got a ferret rod, we've got a mixer, a local oscillator, that's just one transistor, through an IF filter, a one transistor untuned amp, then we've got the NE567, which is the phase lock loop and the quadrature detector, a volume control, an LM380 audio amp, which gives just over a watt. Um, and that's it. Very, very simple. My goodness, this brings back memories. Do you know what? I managed to find it. <laughs> um, I can remember as a kid doing this sort of thing when I used to get me project magazines. It used to be... Everyday electronics I think I mostly had. Some of the projects I built worked, some of them didn't, so, you know, um, I feel like I'm going back to my youth here. Well, I've got my links in and my IC sockets. It would have been a good idea not to put the electrolytics in at the moment around the amplifier, but it's interesting about the tracks linked over on the LM380 but a lot of them are ground pins I think they're for heat sinking if my ancient memory remembers but uh, yeah it's just fun locating the holes and working out where they are I thought we'd have a quick look at what I'm trying to achieve here so we're familiar with an AM signal which has got a lower and an upper sideband and a carrier we're also probably familiar with the envelope detector which is basically a diode, just a usually germanium diode and a bit of smoothing at the end to remove the RF and that rectifies and detects the um, RF and gives you um, the audio frequency but the problem is this has got so many issues such as the kink in the bottom of the response to the diode how these smoothing capacitors discharge etc and the distortion is really quite high and it's, it's really noticeably high when you listen to AM radio so what I'm using is a phase lock loop basically because um, one of the downsides of this envelope detection is it's very sensitive to this carry level and if for any reason this gets altered in respect to the two sidebands you get a lot of distortion and obviously at night time when you get a lot of long distance reflections this can alter in in size and I'm sure you've heard the horrendous distortion you can get when that happens but uh, what um, the synchronous detector does is it actually locks an internal oscillator to this carrier frequency and because it's locked 
um, exactly, it doesn't really make much difference if the two are mixed. Um, so what basically happens is we've, we've got a face lock loop, the um, IF comes in and it's compared to the uh, onboard local oscillator and then you've got a control voltage to ensure the two are locked. Now if it was FM we should just use this control voltage to get an FM demodulated signal but it isn't. So what we've got is a quadrature detector. Now I thought they were only for FM but obviously not. Um, and that's got a 90 degrees uh, phase shift um, on one of the inputs to the mixer and basically by um, combining the carrier frequency which is locally generated and the sidebands basically you've got a, um, a mi mixing going on and of course um, you end up with audio so uh, that's basically how it detects the audio but doing it this way it produces a lot less distortion and of course because you've got a locally generated um, carrier um, it's less susceptible to fading problems so um, that's basically what I'm building here and I hope I've explained that clearly probably not but right well there we go I think I've uh, got there I have actually cut a few more strip holes in places I use far too thick a solder doing most of this I couldn't find the thinner solder so I've made a bit of a mess of it but I thought let's power it up see what happens right it's drawing 20 milliamps so 5 volt regulator yep that's good the collector of the input transistor see where it's sitting 3.4 well that's not too bad I think it's 5 volts on the other side isn't it yeah so it's sitting about halfway no emitter resistor I guess that could vary quite a bit um, how about the um, output of the LM380 that's sitting at half rail and the rail is 9.2 so yeah and we're drawing about 20 milliamps so no smoke or fire yet so that's quite good well that's promising it's a nice bit of hiss I can hear as well just looking at the uh, oscillator oh, look at that Very finicky though. Hmm. Now it's designed for 471 if it'll go down to 455, okay. Yeah, no problem. Well, I'm feeding in a NEG 67 signal. I'm just gonna. The scope probe does affect this. Let's see if I can get it to lock. go so it's locking onto 455 signal kilohertz signal at the moment so right well basically I'd like to just get this to go to start with so what I've done is I've got uh, an HX 108 kit so I had a spare one what I've basically done is populated it up to well, it's very hard to show this isn't it up to here basically so um, basically we just got the mixer the two diodes to stabilize with what I've done is I've put a link in C4 so that side's grounded I'm gonna put a capacitor here and feed it into the um, phase lock loop um, and I've also put C14 in so basically um, it's just basically the mixer um, and uh, basically the first IF transformer so that's what I'm going to use to feed it with and I'll feed that off the 9 volts so we've got stabilized, the stabilised uh, 1.2 volts well the sensitivity isn't great but it is working listen to the synthesizer lock Freeze a goblet to the spookiest night. So heterodynes and then locks. And some more at Sainsbury's. <laughs> when you need it, 
There's a lot of noise on my bench, but let's try um, my AM transmitter. Right, you should better hear the synthesizer locking really well on this one. Well, I'm quite pleased with this lash up. It's, you know, it's only a lash up, um, but uh, yeah, it works quite well. Um, unlike my camera bracket that keeps moving. Um, so I think I've learnt something here, a bit like about um, envelope detection and how it does indeed cause distortion. It also explains a lot about how difficult it is to add a BFO to a radio because you've got to get that carrier at the right level to get decent demodulation of SSB signals. Um, and it also probably explains why um, some videos I watched recently about AM stereo by VW Westlife, I thought how good the sound was. Of course those chips do use synchronous detection so that probably explains why and I always thought direct conversion receivers sound quite clear as well. Now whether it's whether we've only got one IF in here and of course we've got a wider audio bandwidth as well which is helping but if I was to use this daily I think I'd want to make some improvements to this. I think for a start using a ceramic capacitor for the oscillate capacitor is not great. I'd like something better on the preset so um, you could set the oscillator frequency and if I was to do it like this I think I'd want an RF gain control as well to try and keep the level um, more constant for this um, decoder chip but hey I've learnt something here so uh, it was an interesting little build and I do feel like I'd uh, like to build something better uh, a little bit more reliable than this um, to use because um, I, I definitely believe synchronous detection is good so it might be a good thing to have a listen to what this is like at night as well when we get fading. Anyway, thanks for watching um, and I'll see you soon.